Desperate mother couldn't understand why all the nannies were quitting one after the other. But when she decides to record her son's room, what she sees is unbelievably frightening. It was a cloudy morning when Lori arrived home after a long shift at the hospital. Her eyes, heavy with fatigue, could barely stay open. She had spent the night looking after patients, immersed in a frenetic rhythm that only doctors know. Oh God, it's so good to be home. She sighed, throwing her briefcase and coat on the couch. The exhausted doctor just wanted to lie there and close her eyes, empty her mind and take a nap. But Lori was suddenly surprised by the nanny, who seemed agitated and terrified. Mrs. Lori, I, I need to talk to you, said Anne, the nanny, with a trembling voice. The mother immediately became worried, thinking that something had happened to her baby. What's wrong, Anne? Is Sam all right? She asked, jumping up from the couch in fright, her heart pounding. The girl shook her head, saying that everything was fine, that the problem was something else. It's not Samuel. He's fine, but, well, he does some things in his room. You should know that. The young woman was so terrified she could barely speak. Look, Mrs. Lori, I really like Sam and you, but I can't work here anymore. I quit. The woman was shocked. Again? She thought. What do you mean, Anne? Why are you quitting? Tell me what happened tonight. The nanny, already picking up her things, hesitated, looking down, as if even she couldn't believe the words that were coming out of her mouth. Not just tonight, ma'am. Every night. These are strange things. Things I can't explain. All I know is that I don't want to work here anymore. I'm sorry. Lori felt a chill on her neck and a growing sense of unease inside her. Standing at the door, the young nanny said, I really don't know how to explain it. There are noises, movements. I feel like we are not alone in the room. I'm really sorry. I hope you find someone else. Goodbye. And off she went, leaving that mother standing there, helpless and completely confused. And Anne wasn't the only one. All the last five nannies the woman hired to look after her baby left for the same reason, Samuel. The doctor tried to process the young woman's words. Anne was the sixth nanny to resign in the last months, but she never imagined that the reason would be so disturbing. That can't be right. What the hell is going on? Lori, huffing with anger, sadness, and a certain fear, got up and went straight to the baby's room. With her mind still clouded by tiredness and the unexpected news, she entered the room and everything was quiet and peaceful. Nothing like what the nanny said. Her son slept as sound as he could be. She needed a moment to think, to understand what was happening. Fear began to creep into her heart, not just for the safety of her son, but for the uncertainty of the inexplicable. So, she went to her office. She sat down in front of her laptop, determined to review the recordings from the camera she had installed in Samuel's room to monitor him during the night. After all, after the fifth nanny had quit, she had decided to find out once and for all what happens during the night in her son's room. What would she see in those images? What was causing the nanny so much terror? With a click, the screen lit up, showing the first scenes from the night before. And after a while, Lori was petrified. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. The woman, with her eyes fixed on the monitor, was watching images of her baby's nursery. Everything began normally, the nanny putting the child in the crib and the baby falling asleep. The room was silent, the dim yellow light of the lamp creating soft shadows on the walls. So far, so good. However, as the night progressed, things began to change. The nanny, who was already out of the room at that moment, around midnight, didn't see what happened inside. The camera picked up muffled sounds, as if something was moving around the room. At first, Lori thought it might be the wind, or perhaps some interference with the device. But then the sounds became more frequent, and objects began to move without explanation. A book fell off the shelf. A ball rolled across the floor without anyone touching it. Suddenly, the nanny came into the room and was terrified. That mother felt a chill run through her body. But before we continue with the story, we want to know. If you were in this mother's shoes, what would you do? Would you be scared too? What would you do in this situation? Let us know in the comments. Now back to the story. But how? That's impossible. She began to understand why so many nannies had quit, terrified by these inexplicable events. For a moment, the doctor doubted her own sanity, wondering if what she was seeing was real. In the images, little Sam seemed completely oblivious to what was going on around him. He slept peacefully, although sometimes he moved his little hands, and then the things around him in the room seemed to take on a life of their own. 
The woman watched those images intently, trying to find some clue, some indication that would explain the supernatural events. But then she saw something that made her heart almost stop for an instant. A shadow passed quickly across the camera, barely noticeable, but enough to put Lori on high alert. What was that? She rewound the recording, trying to see the shadow again, but it was too fast, almost as if it was playing with her. The woman wondered what else could be going on in that house, in her son's room. What else had the nanny seen and not told her? Fear and uncertainty consumed her. She knew she had to do something, but what? How could she fight something she could barely understand? As she pondered, an idea began to form in her mind. Perhaps there was a logical explanation for all this, something she was overlooking. After all, Lori was a woman of science and believing in the supernatural was not for her, even though her eyes were witnessing the unimaginable. She decided it was time to investigate further, to really understand what was going on in Samuel's room. Her mind was in turmoil. What did those recordings mean? What was happening to her son? However, in order to understand the mysterious events that took place in that little baby's room, we need to go back in time a little. Even Lori herself became thoughtful, remembering everything from the birth of little Sam to that moment. The baby boy was born on a rainy Friday night, the 13th. The mother remembered every detail, the joy, the fear, the anticipation she felt on the day, because it was her first child and also because she didn't have her husband by her side due to his passing. As a doctor, she knew the birthing process well, but experiencing it as a mother was a totally new and overwhelming experience. Everything went well, and Samuel came into the world bringing immense happiness into her life. Returning home with the newborn, Lori felt that every corner of the house she and her husband had bought took on a new meaning. There was a newly assembled nursery, full of toys and books, waiting for moments of joy and discovery. Samuel's room, which they had adapted from an extra room in the house that had been unused for quite some time, became the place where their son would play and spend beautiful nights sleeping there. However, the doctor couldn't help but feel a strange sensation every time she entered the baby's room. It was as if there was a different energy or something she couldn't explain, but it seemed that she was never alone. For the first few months, everything went smoothly, without any problems. However, after Lori finished her maternity leave and had to go back to work, she had to hire a nanny to look after her baby. But as Samuel grew up, strange events began to happen, according to the nannies. Toys moved around on their own when they weren't looking. Unexplained sounds echoed around the room, and a feeling of unease seemed to permeate the environment. The nannies began to come and go in quick succession, each leaving the job with stories of fear and discomfort. It's not possible. Aren't these girls responsible at all? Are they just going to quit their jobs? the mother thought angrily. Each young woman who came through the door brought with her the hope of being the ideal nanny, but that hope quickly disappeared, replaced by dread, caused by the nocturnal events in the baby's room. The first nanny, a girl called Marisa, lasted only two weeks. She told the doctor about the toy movements. Mrs. Lori, I swear the teddy bears I leave in a corner move on their own because when I come back, they're lying on the floor or somewhere else she said with a look of terror on her face, and then he resigned. The woman, logical and skeptical, dismissed the allegations as the exaggerations of an imaginative mind. There's nothing wrong with my baby. This girl doesn't know anything, she thought, frustrated by the situation. Then came Beatrice, who insisted on saying that she felt a presence in the room as if someone was watching her. She lasted less than Marissa, leaving after just a week, claiming that, something unnatural inhabited that house. With each new nanny who resigned, Lori became angrier and more confused. How can they all be feeling and seeing things? She asked herself, trying to remain rational in the midst of the chaos. Claudia, the third nanny, disturbed the doctor the most. She told stories of whispers and giggles in the middle of the night coming from nowhere. Mrs. Lori, it's like there's another child in the room, but I only see Samuel, she said, frightened. Her mother began to wonder if it was something to do with the house, but refused to believe in the supernatural. The other nannies who followed told similar stories, unexplained sounds, toys that moved around, a heavy and oppressive atmosphere as soon as the lights went out. Each story increased the doctor's frustration, as she couldn't understand what was causing this woman to quit. Having had enough of all this, 
she decided to install a camera in her son's room. Now the next time any of these girls come to tell me that my son is some kind of weirdo, a supernatural being, I'm going to prove them wrong. But the last nanny, Anne, seemed different, more mature and centered. Lori had hoped that she would be the exception, but those hopes crumbled the morning Anne announced her resignation. The girl's words echoed in her mind. Strange things happen in Samuel's room. And that's when the doctor began to wonder if there really was something more, something she was overlooking or refusing to see. With the sixth nanny gone and the recordings of the baby's room in hand, Lori knew it was time to face the truth, no matter how strange or frightening it might be. However, when she saw the recordings, the woman couldn't find a logical explanation for it. Were the nannies really right? Because everything she saw in her baby's room, things falling off the shelves, a figure walking past the camera, everything was strange. So she decided that she herself would stay with her son in the room that night. I'm not leaving here until I see with my own eyes what the heck that was I saw on the cameras. She wanted to experience for herself what the nannies had described, but even without wanting to confess it, her heart almost burst out of her mouth with the fear that was beginning to take hold of her. Sitting in an armchair, watching her son sleeping in his crib, Lori stood there waiting. A few minutes passed and nothing happened. Then an hour passed, nothing. Some more time passed and nothing unusual had happened, and the woman began to convince herself that it was all just the nanny's imagination. But it didn't explain the recordings, so she kept waiting. It was midnight, and the doctor's eyes began to feel heavy. Without realizing it, the woman, exhausted from her daily routine, fell asleep. But then, out of nowhere, a noise woke her up. It was a little storybook that had fallen off the shelf, making her jump. Oh my God! She was alert and looked at the little baby. He was still sleeping beautifully, so how could it have been him? Suddenly, another toy on another shelf fell as well, leaving Lori startled. The mother ran and took her son in her arms, waking him up. Somehow she thought it might be his dreams manifesting themselves, so if he woke up, maybe they would stop, but it didn't work. A small black figure still ran around the room in the corners. As it was dark, Lori couldn't see what it was. Who's there? What's going on? What are you doing? Soon another shadow passed by. She also heard sounds coming from inside the walls. Good Lord! There was a feeling of something hiding, a piece of the puzzle that she still couldn't fit together. Fear had already taken hold of that panicked mother holding her child in the middle of the room, but she had to know what was going on. So she quickly turned on the light and determined to unravel the mystery, Lori began to investigate every corner of Samuel's room. She examined toys, books, and even the closet looking for any clue that might explain the strange events she had witnessed, including that small figure she saw. Then, suddenly, a soft sound, almost like a whisper, caught her attention. Lori, intrigued, put little Sam in his crib and ran to get a flashlight. She pushed aside the chest of drawers where she kept the baby's clothes and followed the sound to a small opening in the wall in the corner. As the old houses had wallpaper, the woman hadn't noticed until now, but there was a hole in the wall. The wallpaper covered the hole, leaving it unnoticeable. But there it was. Curious, she switched on the flashlight, pulled out one of the pieces of wallpaper and inspected the place. What that doctor saw was something that almost made her fall over backwards. Her eyes couldn't believe that this was the reason why all her son's nannies had quit. The reason why they were terribly afraid to quit their jobs. You've got to be kidding me. Lori commented to herself, already laughing at the situation. There, hidden in the shadows, was a small family of, believe it or not, of little squirrels. The animals, probably attracted by the warmth of the house, had found a place in the baby's room through that opening in the wall. Lori couldn't believe it. All the fear and mystery that surrounded her son's room was nothing more than the antics of curious squirrels. The shadows, the sounds, the moving objects. Everything was the work of the little intruders. Unbelievable. She laughed, relieved and incredulous at the same time. The truth was so simple, so mundane, that it seemed almost comical. The supernatural presence that had terrified the nannies and caused so many nights of restlessness and terror was just little animals looking for shelter and food. The next day, Lori made sure that the family of squirrels was gently removed and the hole in the wall repaired. She called in specialists who took the animals to a safe place and plugged the hole behind the dresser. 
She knew she would have an interesting story to tell the next babysitter, a story that would certainly demystify the nocturnal events in Samuel's room. With the mystery finally solved, that mother felt a weight being lifted from her shoulders. The squirrels, now outside her house, were no longer a threat to the peace and quiet of her home. She smiled as she thought about how things can seem so frightening at night and so simple in daylight. After a few days, Lori prepared to tell the story to the new nanny she had hired. The two laughed a lot. Life was back to normal at the doctor's house. Little Sam was as happy and carefree as ever, and Joyce, the nanny, quickly adapted to the routine of the house. Lori felt grateful to have unraveled the mystery and to finally be able to do her shifts without worry from now on. She learned that she shouldn't always assume the worst, especially when it comes to something she doesn't fully understand. And when she was free at night, while she was putting Samuel to bed, that mother would look at the now quiet room and think about how strange and wonderful the world can be. Sometimes a simple squirrel can be the protagonist of a story that seemed worthy of a thriller movie. With the mystery solved, Lori could finally sleep soundly, knowing that the nights of fear and confusion would only be good stories to tell when her son grew up. On the most important day of his life, a man reveals something unbelievable to his fiancée right at the altar, leaving her and all the guests in complete shock. The sun rose, shining brightly, reflecting the happiness and expectation that permeated the air of that wedding day. The sky was clear and blue as if nature was conspiring to make that day just perfect. The elegantly dressed guests slowly settled in, exchanging smiles and warm greetings as they waited for the ceremony to begin. At the altar, Turner, the groom, was visibly nervous. He was adjusting his tie and wiping the sweat from his brow, his expression shifting between joy and apprehension. Anxiety took hold of him, not just because of the commitment he was about to make, but because of a secret that weighed heavily on his heart, a secret he knew he had to reveal that day, at that very moment. The ceremony began, and the bride, Lillian, made her triumphant entrance. She looked stunning, walking slowly down the aisle, a radiant smile lighting up her face. The music, soft and emotional, filled the room, accompanying her every step towards the altar. Turner's eyes met hers, and for a moment he lost himself in the beauty and light that she emanated. But his heart was racing, not because of love and admiration, but because of fear of what was about to happen. Oh God, am I going to lose her? He thought, with terror and uncertainty in his heart. He knew that what he was about to do could change everything, and certainly for the worse. When Lillian arrived at the altar, Turner welcomed her with a tender kiss on the forehead. The priest began his speech and soon it was time for the vows. The woman said her vows with a voice full of love and commitment, each word a testament to what she felt for the man. Then it was Turner's turn. He began with words of love. Lillian, my love, you are my springtime. But then he hesitated. A tension filled the air. Tears welled up in his eyes, and his voice trembled. And I promise you that I will always be honest with you. He said, his voice filled with emotion and dread. The man swallowed, took a deep breath, and continued. And that's why I need to tell you something. The silence that followed was horrible. Everyone present was holding their breath, anticipating what was to come. And then, with a voice broken by emotion, Turner revealed his secret, something so unexpected and shocking that Lillian fell to her knees, crying. The guests were paralyzed, incredulous at the sudden and dramatic turn of events. But what did Turner say that caused such a shock? What was this revelation that resounded through the church, leaving everyone speechless, each person trying to comprehend the magnitude of what had just happened? To understand it better, we need to go back in time. A few months before the day that would change his life forever, Turner was just an ordinary man, struggling to find his way in the world of real estate. He was hardworking, but the poor guy had faced a long period of unemployment with a quiet courage. These periods of uncertainty had tested his resilience and strengthened his determination. However, he never let the difficulties shake his optimism or his faith in the future. Then came an opportunity to work for a renowned luxury real estate company that was more than just a job. It was a symbol of hope and the promise of a new chapter in his journey. His fiancée, Lillian, was the light of his life, his constant companion and unconditional support. 
Turner longed to give her everything she deserved and more. She had been by his side through the most difficult times, sharing his worries and celebrating every victory. Now, with the prospect of a more secure future, the man was more determined than ever to build a life full of happiness and comfort for them. On the day of the interview, Turner woke up early, carefully selecting his clothes and accessories, wanting to present the best version of himself. He looked at himself in the mirror, adjusting his tie and fixing his hair, allowing himself to feel a brief moment of pride in the man he had become, despite all the adversity he had faced. As he walked towards the real estate agency, he mentally went over every detail of his CV, every planned answer to possible questions. He felt prepared, or so he thought, until he was walking down the company hallway and noticed that, out of nowhere, curious looks and whispers broke out among the employees. The atmosphere of strangeness enveloped him, making him question himself and his presence there. What's going on? He thought, trying to dismiss the uncomfortable feeling in his chest. Why is everyone looking at me like they've seen a ghost? Is my suit wrinkled? As he approached the boss's office, all eyes followed Turner, creating an almost touchable sense of distress. He took a deep breath, gathering all his courage and confidence before knocking on the door and entering the room that could define his future. As soon as he entered the room, the boss, a renowned businessman known for his vision and leadership, was looking at his CV. Good morning, Turner. It's a pleasure. Please have a seat. However, the moment he looked up to greet the young man before he could finish his sentence, his face turned with shock and disbelief. Turner also froze, experiencing the same abrupt change. Both men's hearts raced with a mixture of confusion and curiosity. They both looked at each other. The silence that followed between them was deafening, full of meaning and surprise. It was clear that this meeting was not just a job interview, it was something much deeper and more personal. The room, once the setting for a professional conversation, had become the stage for a drama that neither of them had expected to play out. And so, in the midst of surprise and the unknown, Turner's story was about to take an unexpected turn, one that would link him back to a long-forgotten past and secrets that would change everything. The surprise on the faces of the two men was no coincidence, but was due to the fact they looked exactly alike. It was as if there were two versions of the same person. The resemblance was undeniable, and the shock of this revelation stunned them. It was as if they were twin brothers, and they were. How... how is this possible? Said the boss, whose name was Harris Fraser. He was dumbfounded. His words could barely express the confusion and surprise he felt. Turner, equally stunned, couldn't look away as his mind spun in search of answers to the riddle that was unfolding before him. You... you look just like me, he said, perplexed. As the two men recovered from the initial shock, they began to talk, trying to unravel the mystery of their origins. Turner knew he had been adopted, a reality he had grown up with, but he didn't know the exact circumstances of his adoption, which had always been a mystery to him. Now, in front of Harris, the possibility of discovering the truth about his past was becoming a more tangible reality. The CEO, with a shaky voice, explained that his parents had had twins, but a tragedy had separated the family. At the height of the Fraser family's fortune, due to their large luxury real estate holdings, one of the babies, Turner, had been kidnapped and a ransom demanded. Desperate, the parents even tried to bargain with the criminals, but as they were terrified that they wouldn't keep their part of the deal, they decided to disobey their demands and informed the police of the kidnapping. They called in the officers to continue the investigation and bring their son back, but this decision had devastating consequences. The gang, angered by the interference of the police, disappeared with the baby, leaving the parents in deep and lasting despair. What they didn't know was that the kidnappers had abandoned the baby on the doorstep of some house, which by fade or chance it turned out to be the home of Turner's adoptive parents. They. A simple and loving couple took the little one in and raised him with love and care, even though they had no resources or wealth. Harris's parents never gave up looking for their lost son, but despite all their efforts, they never found him. As the years passed, pain and hope intertwined in a silent sadness that permeated the Fraser home. Harris grew up and took over the family's luxury real estate company, further expanding the legacy built by his parents. But the absence of his twin brother was a constant shadow in his life, a reminder of what had been lost. And now, after the death of his elderly parents, 
the millionaire found himself alone, leading the company and carrying the memory of a fragmented family. What neither man could have imagined was that fate, in its unpredictable twists and turns, would bring them together in an unexpected and miraculous way. Turner, seeking an opportunity in a renowned real estate company, and Harris, leading that same company, were now face to face, linked not only by blood, but by a story that was finally beginning to unravel. The brothers, still navigating the turbulent waters of such an impactful revelation, opted for a more personal and intimate approach to understand and accept the truth before sharing it with friends and relatives. They wanted to get to know each other first before announcing to the world that they were twins, even though Harris employees already knew the truth. They spent time together, sharing stories, dreams, and sorrows, each moment helping to build a bridge over the chasm that the years of separation had created. Turner, with a twinkle in his eye, showed his brother pictures of his parents and his fiance, Lillian. The girl's radiant smile in the picture brought a feeling of genuine joy to Harris, who expressed his happiness for his twin with sincere enthusiasm. For his part, the millionaire shared his mansion with Turner, a majestic and elegant building, a symbol of what Turner's life could have been had fate not separated them. The CEO of the real estate company, moved by a sense of justice and brotherhood, began to prepare the paperwork to transfer half of his fortune to his brother. He wanted to correct, in any way he could, the injustices that life had imposed on him. The plans included formally introducing Harris to Turner's adoptive parents and celebrating their reunification. However, the joy and hope that surrounded the twin brothers was abruptly cut short. Fate had been very cruel to the two, now separating them in a fatal way. Turner, on a seemingly ordinary day, said goodbye to Lillian in the morning to go to work. He was on his way to show an out-of-town house to a client, but on the way back he suffered a terrible accident. His car crashed and caught fire, and the poor man trapped in the wreckage couldn't escape in time. News of the incident spread quickly in the real estate company, and Harris was called in immediately, as the car that caught fire was registered in the company's name. The shock and pain of losing his newly found brother devastated Harris. He could hardly believe that just a month after reuniting with Turner, his only remaining family, he had now lost him forever. Sadness enveloped him like a dense fog, and the inconsolable millionaire knew that the responsibility of sharing the tragic news with Turner's family now fell on his shoulders. Resolute, even in the midst of his grief, he decided to go in person to the home of the twins' adoptive parents. But when he got there, he discovered that they were very old and seriously ill and debilitated. The father, with his eyesight blurred by age and poor health, mistook Harris for Turner. What happened, my son? Asked the old man in a weak voice. Weren't you just going to come home for the weekend? Hearing these words, the man felt an even greater pain in his heart. He realized that he couldn't break the news to the poor parents at that moment, knowing that the truth about Turner's death might be more than they could bear. They could suffer, and the worst could happen. Taken by a decision he had never imagined he would make, he replied, Oh, I wanted to come and see you today, Dad. And adopted Turner's character, even though his heart was heavy with lies, although he was motivated by the desire to protect his brother's parents from further suffering. Shrouded in a cloud of pain and despair, Harris found himself entangled in a web of lies and deceit that he never imagined he could weave. After the tragic accident that took Turner's life, he took his brother's place, handling the funeral arrangements in anguished silence. What am I doing, God? He asked himself repeatedly, his conscience tormented by guilt and the confusion of his feelings. And whenever he visited his brother's sick parents, Harris didn't have the heart to dispel the illusion. The love and longing in his elderly parents' eyes was more than he could bear. So, day after day, he continued the disguise, each visit a painful reminder of the truth he was hiding. When the time came to meet Lillian, his brother's fiance, Harris was determined to reveal the truth. However, the moment his eyes met hers, a woman of stunning beauty and captivating aura, he found himself overwhelmed by a whirlwind of unexpected emotions. 
My brother was very lucky. She's incredible, he thought, admiring the girl who should have been his sister-in-law. As they spent time together, Harris, still pretending to be Turner, became more and more involved with Lillian. The initial plan to reveal the truth about the accident was postponed, replaced by a growing feeling that he struggled to understand. The millionaire was falling in love with her, and with each passing day, his courage to tell the truth was waning. Lillian, for her part, noticed a slight change in the man she believed to be her fiancé. Turner seemed different somehow, more introspective, but she attributed this to the stress of the new job and the stress of planning the wedding. However, over time, she found herself more and more attracted to this new side of him. As Turner began to open up more, a side of him she didn't know about, and which captivated her deeply. Finally, the wedding day arrived. At the altar, in front of all the guests, Harris felt the weight of his choices like never before. He knew he couldn't start married life based on such a big lie. So, with a heavy heart and a mind filled with uncertainty, the man looked at Lillian, his eyes filling with tears, and said the words he should have said many months ago. Lillian, I'm not your fiance, Turner. My name is Harris Fraser and I'm his twin brother. Turner, he, unfortunately, he passed away. He confessed, his voice trembling at the magnitude of what he was revealing. The girl's reaction was immediate and devastating. She was horrified, her hands covering her face as tears flowed in disbelief. Harris then turned to the guests, explaining the whole story, from the baby's kidnapping to the brother's reunion and Turner's tragic accident. Parents, friends, everyone in the church wept with disconsolation. The revelation shook every person present, each absorbing the impact of that painful truth. The ceremony that should have been a happy beginning was now a scene of mourning and despair, a reminder of how unpredictably cruel and surprising life can be. The wedding, of course, was immediately canceled, out of respect and the need to mourn. Everyone needed time to process the avalanche of emotions and the twists and turns that the universe had presented so abruptly. Over the next few days, Harris took Lillian and Turner's elderly parents all very angry at the millionaire's lie, to the place where he had buried his brother. In an intimate ceremony full of sadness, the three of them were able to say goodbye to Turner properly, each dealing with the pain in their own way. Harris stayed away because he felt they didn't want him there. His heart was heavy at the loss and the part he had played in those tragic events. The rich man obviously didn't expect forgiveness or understanding, but to his surprise, when it was time to leave, after talking for a while, Turner's parents, although devastated by the loss of their son, expressed gratitude and acceptance towards Harris. You shouldn't have kept this from us, but we understand. They recognized him as part of their family, an extension of the love they felt for Turner. We think our son would want you to be part of our family. After all, Harris had also suffered a lot, growing up without his brother who should have been his best friend. Lillian, however, felt deeply betrayed, the trust she had placed in Turner, who she now knew had always been Harris, had been broken. The marriage would not go ahead, of course, and she stayed away to heal her broken heart and reconsider the future. The pain of loss and disappointment enveloped her, and the poor girl needed time and space for herself. However, Harris and Lillian's story didn't end with sadness. After a few months, the two met again and talked openly about everything they had been through. In their conversations and in sharing their pain and hopes, something blossomed between them. The woman realized that despite the pain and betrayal, she had fallen in love with Harris, not the man she thought was her fiance, but the real complex man that he was. It took time, a lot of talking and mutual understanding, but eventually Lillian opened her heart to him again. After two years of a relationship built on solid foundations of honesty and growing love, Harris and Lillian were married, ready to start a new life together. The joy in the couple's lives was magnified when she announced she was pregnant. They decided together that the baby's name would be Turner, a tribute to her brother and to the man who had brought their paths together in such an unexpected and indelible way. And so their lives went on, marked by ups and downs, but always together, facing whatever fate had in store for them. And as they looked to the future, 
holding little boy Turner in their arms, they knew that no matter what, they would always move on to new beginnings. A baby girl is abandoned by her mother in the maternity ward just for being born with a different condition in her eyes. But after she is adopted by a nurse, a miracle happens that leaves everyone speechless. Danielle had always dreamed of the day when she would hold her own child in her arms. At the age of 40, after years of failed attempts and disappointments, the news of her pregnancy came as a miracle, a ray of hope in her lonely life. As a single mother, she saw in that child not only the fulfillment of a dream, but also the promise of happiness. The expectation of meeting her baby, of feeling the warmth of her small body, was what kept her strong during the most difficult moments of her pregnancy. On that cold winter's night when Danielle felt the first labor pains, she felt a mixture of anxiety and excitement. Alone, she made her way to the maternity ward, her heart pounding with every contraction, every movement of the baby in her womb, reinforcing that her dream was coming true. The birth was difficult, requiring an emergency cesarean section. The woman couldn't wait to hear her baby's first cry, to see her little eyes looking at her. But when the baby finally arrived, a tense silence filled the room. The baby was there, perfect and healthy, except for one detail that no one expected. Her eyes were completely closed, as if they were sealed shut, a rare condition that none of the doctors could explain. On her first night sleeping next to her daughter and looking at her little face, Danielle simply despaired. I, I can't do this, Danielle muttered, with shock and disappointment taking over her emotions. Joy and expectation quickly turned to fear and uncertainty. Danielle, who had seen in that child the chance to finally be happy, now found herself facing an uncertain future, full of challenges that she didn't feel prepared to face. I can't raise a blind child, she whispered to herself, getting up from her bed. Even with the advice of the medical team who offered her support and explained that more tests would be needed and that there might be hope for her daughter, for Danielle, the words sounded empty, unable to fill the chasm that had opened up in her heart. In the middle of the night, when the hospital fell silent at night, the woman made a decision that would change the course of her life forever. Still recovering from surgery, she gathered her things, dressed herself with difficulty, and, in an act of desperation, abandoned her daughter at the hospital. She took her car and simply ran away, leaving behind not only the child she had longed for, but also a part of herself, a piece of her dream that would never be whole again. Danielle's decision, driven by fear and the inability to face the unknown, would mark the beginning of a story that no one could have predicted. The next morning, the news of the newborn's abandonment spread through the hospital, leaving a trail of disbelief and indignation. Nurses and doctors used to witnessing the strength of the maternal bond during childbirth were now perplexed by such a drastic act. What a hateful, insensitive woman. She left her daughter because she's blind. Deplorable, they whispered, unable to understand what would drive a mother to such extremes. In the days that followed, the little baby, still without a name, became the center of attention for the nursing team. Despite the efforts made to locate the missing woman, all attempts to contact her were in vain. The police, called in to help with the search, couldn't find any trace of her either. It was as if she had vanished, leaving behind only her daughter and a silence full of unanswered questions. Nobody knew, but Danielle simply fled to another city, precisely so that she wouldn't be found, and for fear of being arrested too. Among the many hearts touched by the little girl's situation was Helena's, one of the hospital's most experienced nurses. Helena, known for her dedication and empathy, felt especially connected to that little baby abandoned to his own fate. Her faith, always present in her life, became the refuge where she sought comfort and hope. Determined to make a difference, Helena made the decision to adopt the baby, so that the baby could finally leave the cold and lonely hospital and not end up in some orphanage. Helena's faith was not limited to practical actions. She believed in the power of prayer. In the silence of her home, in front of the crib where the little baby slept, the nurse dedicated moments of deep spiritual connection, begging for a miracle. Please, Lord, don't let this child suffer. She prayed fervently, her words filled with an unshakable hope. Please give her the chance to see the beauty of the world, to see the faces of those who love her. 
Watching the baby sleep peacefully, Helena couldn't help but let her thoughts wander back to Danielle, the mother who had left without looking back. How can a mother have the courage to abandon her own child? She wondered, her heart breaking. Every glance at the little girl, every smile, reinforced her commitment. She would do everything possible and impossible to provide that child with the love and care that her biological mother was unable to give. And so, amid the routine of care and prayers, Helena and the little girl began a new chapter in their lives, united by a bond that went beyond blood, a bond of love, faith, and hope for miracle. The connection between the nurse and baby, who she named Lily, grew every day, weaving a maternal relationship strengthened by love and faith. The woman saw in Lily not only the child she had decided to protect, regardless of the fact that she was blind, but truly her daughter. An unbreakable bond that not even biology could dispute. The baby, with her innocent joy and smile, filled the house with light, transforming every ordinary day into a moment of gratitude and wonder. When Lily turned one year old, the nurse organized a small celebration, a little party that, as simple as it was, was full of meaning. She invited friends and colleagues from the hospital to celebrate at her home, all those who had somehow shared her journey since birth. The cake was ready, the candles were lit, and an atmosphere of warmth and happiness permeated the air. However, a miracle was about to happen in front of everyone's eyes. When it was time to blow out the candle, the nurse, holding her daughter, silently made a wish, a plea from the depths of her heart, that her little girl could see the beauty of the world around her. No sooner had the words formed in her mind than a collective sigh filled the room. The girl, who until then had kept her eyes shut, slowly opened them for the first time, fixing her gaze full of love and curiosity on Helena. Oh my God, it's a miracle, said the perplexed guests, staring in amazement at the scene before them. What everyone saw was more than a miracle. It was a phenomenon that defied logic and science. Lily's eyes, a unique lilac blue, shone with a light of their own, enchanting all who saw them. The doctors present, specialists accustomed to the mysteries of the human body, couldn't believe their eyes. One of them, curious, began to explain the possible cause of this marvel. Lily is not blind. She may have suffered from some extremely rare condition. The other doctors agreed, knowing that it was extremely rare for someone to have their eyes closed for a year. After the big surprise, several tests were carried out, and they explained Lily's condition to Helena. It's an anomaly where the eyes are born closed to protect and better develop the vision, as well as giving the child extraordinary immunity. This type of biological adaptation is capable of developing autonomous methods of fighting certain diseases as well as resulting in incredibly unique iris colors. Only one in seven million people have this condition. The medical explanation did little to diminish the amazement and joy of those who witnessed the event. For Helena, it didn't matter about the medical terms or the odds. What she did know was that her faith and love had been rewarded in a way she could never have imagined. The miracle not only allowed Lily to see her, but also promised a future of infinite possibilities where love and the miracle went hand in hand. After the revelation, the story of the little baby, the miracle baby, soon spread beyond the confines of the hospital and the local community, reaching national visibility through several newspapers. Her rare condition and the dramatic change in her life captured the public's eye, instantly turning her into an unlikely celebrity. Lily's lilac blue eyes, along with the story of her miracle, fascinated everyone making her known for her unique beauty. It wasn't long before the offers started pouring in. Photographers and children's modeling agencies, enchanted by Lily's uniqueness, saw in her not only an inspiring story, but also an unforgettable image. Her mother, Helena, who had always looked after her daughter with the utmost love and dedication, even in the face of financial difficulties, saw their lives take a new turn. Can you believe it, my princess? There are so many doors opening up for you, she said as she read the offers that arrived in the mail. 
The little girl, who was only a year old with her bright eyes, just smiled, not yet fully understanding the impact of her life on the world around her. With the money that started coming in, the nurse was able to realize dreams that had previously seemed distant. The humble house where they lived underwent a significant renovation, transforming it into an even more welcoming and secure home for both of them. Helena also managed to renovate Lily's bedroom, decorating it with soft pink colors and toys, a safe place where the little girl could play and learn. It's like a dream come true, isn't it, my love? She commented one day, admiring the changes in her home. Even people on the street couldn't help but stare in admiration when they passed the baby. What a beautiful little girl. Her eyes are like precious jewels, they said, reaffirming Lily's uniqueness and the deep love the nurse felt for her daughter. As well as the immediate improvements to her quality of life, Helena also thought about the future. Part of the money they earned went into savings for Lily, ensuring that when she grew up she would have the resources to pursue her dreams, whatever they might be. The journey of the two, mother and daughter, marked by challenges and overcoming, became a symbol of hope and unconditional love. Until, one day, their lives were about to face a new challenge. Danielle, the little girl's biological mother, after almost two years of absence and indifference, had her interest rekindled when she saw her daughter in several national newspapers. The story of the little girl's miracle and her unique eyes had not only captured the public's heart, but also awakened in her a selfish desire to reclaim the child she had abandoned. Moved by this sudden change of heart, but above all by the prospect of personal gain, Danielle decided that she wanted the little girl back. She traveled to the town where Helena lived, finding the house where the dedicated nurse raised the little girl with love and care. Knocking on the door, the woman introduced herself with a certain hesitation, although she tried to hide her nervousness with a firm posture. Good afternoon, Helena. I'm Danielle, Lily's mother. She began, staring at the nurse with forced determination. I've been through a lot, and now I've seen the news about the miracle about how my daughter, our daughter, is a success. I came to take her with me. I believe it's time for her to be with her real mother. The woman holding the child in her arms looked at Danielle with a mixture of shock and indignation. Then a burning anger filled her heart. How dare she say such words? Has she gone mad? Her love for Lily strengthened her voice as he replied, You have no right to call her our daughter. You abandoned her when she needed you most. You are not her mother. I remember the look on your face when you saw her for the first time. Or have you forgotten? I was the one who helped you give birth. You look disgusted. Danielle tried to interrupt. But I'm her biological mother. That must mean something, right? I... I've changed. I want to be part of her life now. The nurse's response was sharp, like a real storm of emotions. Oh. So you've changed. Now that Lily is famous, now that there's money involved, you've changed. You only saw her as a burden, Danielle. You abandoned her in hospital as if she were nothing. And I, I loved her from the first moment I saw her. I looked after her, I protected her, and I'm going to continue to do so. You're not taking my child. I have legal custody of her. Seeing that her words weren't having the desired effect, Danielle tried to appeal to emotion, but Helena was determined and dropped the bombshell. You'd better leave, said Helena, the firmness and anger in her voice making it clear that there was no room for negotiation. Or I'll call the police. Have you forgotten that you're still wanted in the city for abandoning a child? If you don't want to end up in jail, then you'd better leave and never come back. Defeated and aware of the legal consequences she would face if she insisted, the woman retreated, leaving behind the house that represented the home Lily deserved, but which she never provided. As she walked away, her thoughts turned to what might have been. If I'd stayed with her, she reflected. I wouldn't be alone now. I'd have money. But how would I know that she wasn't blind? But they were empty thoughts, the fruit of past choices that now weighed on her shoulders like chains. Helena closed the door, turning to her daughter with a smile full of love and protection. After the confrontation with Danielle, their lives followed a path of happiness and unconditional love. Danielle's attempt to reconnect left no mark on the strong bond between mother and daughter, a bond that grew even stronger over time.
Lily grew not only in stature, but also in beauty and grace. With her lilac blue eyes illuminating not only her face, but the lives of those around her. Helena made sure that the girl knew her story from an early age, not hiding the circumstances of her abandonment, but emphasizing the miracle of her vision and the love that united them. You are my daughter. You always will be, no matter what, she said, reaffirming the commitment of love and protection she felt for the little one. Lily, for her part, absorbed every word, every gesture of affection from her mother, growing up with a deep gratitude and admiration for the woman who chose to stay by her side when no one else would. Her career as a child model also flourished, and her image captured hearts and minds, although it was the love and security she found at home that truly shaped her character. She grew up and knew her luck, the second chance that life had given her through the nurse, and she promised herself that she would never take this love for granted. The years passed, and the girl became a young woman of rare beauty and intelligence, with her striking presence in any environment. Her life story, although marked by a tumultuous beginning, served as an inspiration to many, a testimony to the power of love and faith. Helena looked at Lily with a mixture of pride and admiration. You've overcome so many obstacles, my dear. You're my little princess, she reaffirmed, her words full of emotion. Together, mother and daughter lived a happy life, with their home always full of laughter, love, and gratitude. Lily, aware of her history, treasured every moment with Helena, knowing that the true family is the one we choose and that chooses us back, not through blood ties, but through unbreakable bonds of love. And so, surrounded by each other's love and the community that supported them, the two continued to write their story as a journey of overcoming love and happiness, proving that, in the end, true love always prevails. A woman enters the house next door and comes across a panicked little boy saying something terrible happened to his father. What she finds out makes her heart race. That rainy morning, Mary woke up with a strange feeling. Life in the small town was peaceful, but something seemed out of place. After having breakfast, she decided to take some pieces of cake to her neighbor, Luke, who recently moved in next door with his six-year-old son James and his two-year-old daughter Laura. Walking under the gray sky, the woman approached Luke's house. She rang the doorbell, but no one answered. She knocked and knocked again, and then she noticed the door was ajar. Mary wasn't a nosy neighbor, but she knew that the man used to get up early and get his children ready for school before going to work. So why was the door unlocked? That worried her. Luke? She called out, her voice echoing through the silent house. As she entered, the woman noticed that there was water running down the stairs from the bathroom on the second floor. So she ran upstairs. As she got closer, she could hear the sound of the shower and the water falling. But before she could actually reach the second floor, her eyes caught sight of something that intrigued her. James sitting on the floor with his little sister on his lap. His eyes were full of tears. Honey, what happened? Where's your father? Mary asked, kneeling down next to him. And the little boy, paralyzed, just sobbing with shock, uttered the words that made that woman's heart almost burst out of her chest. My father died in the shower, said the boy in a trembling voice. But before we continue with the story, we want to know, if you were in this woman's situation, what would you do? Let us know in the comments. Now, back to the story. The woman felt a shiver run through her body. She got up and immediately ran to the bathroom, fearing the worst. When she opened the door, she saw Luke on the floor, apparently lifeless, his body partially covered by the shower curtain. Oh my God, Luke! Panicked, Mary checked his vital signs. They were almost imperceptible. She quickly called the emergency, explaining the situation while trying to calm the little boy, who arrived shortly afterwards in tears. Is my daddy dead? He cried, poor thing. No, my love, he's not dead. He's breathing very weakly. He's unconscious, she explained. While they waited for the ambulance to arrive, Mary tried to understand what had happened. Luke was a single father, a hard worker, and always seemed so strong. How could this have happened? She thought, hugging the little boy who was crying silently. The ambulance arrived and the paramedics quickly took the man away. The woman, holding James's small hand and holding the baby in her arms, accompanied her neighbor to the hospital. Sitting in the waiting room, she looked at those two poor children who were trying to distract themselves with a small toy car and wondered about their future. Will he be all right? Oh God, 
His children are still so young. She lamented, imagining the worst. She remembered the day Luke moved in next door, bringing with him James, little Laura, and a load of boxes. It was a new neighborhood for everyone, and they quickly became friends. But what happened? She thought, her heart clenching with worry and uncertainty. She knew she would have to be strong, not just for herself, but especially for the children, who now seemed vulnerable in such a big and uncertain world. While James played in the corner of the hospital waiting room with his little sister, the woman reflected on the events of that morning. The image of Luke lying unconscious in the shower never left her mind. At a certain point, the little boy stopped playing and, with his innocent eyes full of confusion, looked at Mary for comfort. Aunt Mary, is my dad coming back? His trembling voice interrupted the girl's thoughts. She hugged him tightly, promising that everything would be all right, although deep down she wasn't sure. Then the doctor finally appeared, bringing news. Luke had a stroke. By a miracle he didn't die, but he will be under observation for a few days to see if he has any sequelae and to make a full recovery, he explained. Mary felt immense relief, but also growing concern. Who would look after his children while the man was in hospital? When they entered the room where the children's father was, and after the doctor told him he had to stay there, Luke almost had another stroke. No way, I need to look after my children and I have to work, I'm all they have. Mary quickly offered to look after the children. They can stay with me, Luke. I am not gonna leave you alone right now. I'm here for you, she said. The young woman who had lost her husband in a tragic accident two years prior, knew what it was like to face loneliness and despair. She wouldn't allow her neighbor to feel helpless and face something similar. Luke thanked her and said goodbye to his children. Daddy's gonna be fine, okay, son? He said to the little boy. He hugged his children and they left for the neighbor's house. In the days that followed, Mary looked after the children as if they were her own. She took them to visit their father every day, trying to keep their routine as normal as possible. On her visits to the hospital, she noticed how the presence of the little ones brought a glow to Luke's tired face. As the days went by, she began to wonder about Luke's past. Why does he never mention anything about the mother of his children? What drove him to such a serious breakdown? She thought. Mary knew that in order to truly help her friend, she had to understand what had brought them to that critical point. On a quiet afternoon, while the children were playing in the hospital garden, the neighbor started scouring social media in search of clues about Luke's life. She was surprised to find a photo of him, smiling and surrounded by co-workers at a well-known automotive company. He seemed so happy, and what changed? He wondered. The search led her to discover that Luke had faced a series of challenges in recent years. He had lost his job due to company cutbacks, faced financial difficulties, and struggled to raise the children on his own. The pressure of being a single father in a judgmental society, added to his daily struggles, had taken its toll. Mary felt an even deeper connection with him, understanding the strength and resilience he showed. She committed herself to being there so that Luke, James, and Laura knew they could count on her not only now, but also in the future. As the sun went down, the woman looked at the two little children who were laughing as they ran around the garden and smiled. She didn't know what the future held for them, but she was determined to be a part of it, offering whatever support she could. But for us to really understand more about the story of that hardworking father, we need to go back a few years. Luke, a young and ambitious man, began his career in a large automotive company with big dreams and aspirations. He excelled in his work, earning admiration and respect from his colleagues. Everything seemed promising until he fell in love with a co-worker, Layla, who seemed like the perfect woman. Their relationship blossomed quickly, and Luke soon discovered that she was pregnant. The girl, however, turned out to be less responsible than ideal. When she found out she was pregnant, she quit her job, leaving the man with no news for months. Only when the baby was born did she come to him saying she was sorry. Giving her a chance and wanting to build a family, that hardworking father married Layla, and they started a life together. Three years later, Laura came. But along with this happiness, the worst happened. Layla simply abandoned them. She said she wasn't born to be a mother, and that she didn't care about them. She left in the middle of the night, leaving a letter so that Luke would never look for her. The man felt betrayed, left to face the future alone. Heartbroken but determined, he decided to raise his children as a single father. While Luke struggled to balance work and parenthood, the company faced financial difficulties. He was one of the first to be laid off during the staff cuts. 
Without a job and with two children to raise, the man was plunged into a period of uncertainty and struggle. He moved to a more affordable house in the small town where Mary lived, trying to start a new life. However, the debts piled up and the weight of responsibility began to affect her physical and mental health until he couldn't take it and had that stroke just as he was giving Laura a bath in the morning. James, seeing everything, picked up his sister and didn't know what to do. He just sat on the stairs and cried, thinking that his father had died. Mary, on the other hand, had her own story of loss and struggle. Her husband died in a tragic car accident, leaving her alone, crushing her dreams of becoming a mother. Loneliness and pain shaped her into a strong and empathetic woman. When she moved in next door to Luke, she had no idea that their lives would become so deeply intertwined and that the children would call her Aunt Mary. And now, looking after her neighbor's children, she felt as if this was the closest thing to motherhood she would ever have in her life. A simple moment with James and Laura made her day. Sitting next to Luke in the hospital room, he thanked her for everything. Thank you so much for looking after them for me, Mary. He murmured with tears in his eyes. I don't know what I would have done without you. The woman felt a squeeze in her heart when she heard Luke's words. She knew that the man's journey to recovery would be long and arduous, but she was willing to help in any way she could. Mary became a constant presence in the life of that small family in those days. She helped with the housework, took James to play and Laura to pick flowers, and was a shoulder to lean on for the father. Their friendship grew stronger, creating an unbreakable bond. And it was by talking every day that she discovered an old dream of the man, something that he revealed was surprising. I had plans before all this happened. I didn't want to work at that company forever. They were very toxic, you know? I wanted to open a small bookstore, a cozy place where people could get lost in wonderful stories. The children's father loved to tell them stories before bedtime. But after James and Laura were born and Layla left me, those dreams disappeared. The neighbor reflected on Luke's words and an idea began to take shape in her mind. An idea that could help that father recover his dreams and bring a new purpose to both of them. And when the man was finally released from hospital, Mary was ready to share her achievement. Luke, I have a surprise for you, she said, taking her friend and his children to the space she had prepared. When she opened the doors, Luke was surprised by a cozy place with shelves of books and a small cafe in the corner. I want this to be the start of your bookstore. She said, thrilled. The man was speechless, completely perplexed. What do you mean, Mary? What, what is all of this? She explained that, with the death of her husband, she had received a good inheritance, but had never really known what to do with it. She had no purpose for it. But when she heard about her friend's genuine dream, she realized that it would be a great idea to open a place where people could be enchanted by the stories told there. That would be her new purpose in life. Mary smiled. I want us to be partners, what do you think? Let's create a magical place for James and Laura and for everyone who loves books. Tears of joy and gratitude flooded Lucian's eyes. Mary, I, I don't know what to say, this is incredible. And so a new chapter began in the lives of the woman, the father and his children. The bookstore was named The Book Nook and quickly became a project of love and renewal. They worked together on the decoration, choosing every book and every detail with care. For Luke, it was the realization of a dream he thought he had lost. For Mary, it was an opportunity to build something new and meaningful in her life. The opening was a big event in the small town. Friends and neighbors came to see the new space. The cozy cafe in the corner became a favorite meeting place for everyone, and the shelves full of books attracted readers of all ages. Over time, the book nook became more than a bookstore. It became a place where the community gathered, where children listened to stories, and where adults found a quiet refuge. The members organized children's reading events, adult book clubs, and even autograph sessions with local authors. During this period, Mary began to realize that her feelings for Luke were changing to something else. She admired the father's strength and resilience, and the way he smiled even after facing so many adversities touched her heart. However, the woman was uncertain about how to express these feelings, fearful of ruining the friendship she cherished so much. But she didn't even have to say anything, because one day, when they were closing the bookshop, the man approached her and said everything his heart desired. Mary, I, I need to tell you something. He began hesitantly. These last few months have been incredible, and I, I've started to fall in love with you. Mary was perplexed, surprised, and moved. Me too. 
You've become such an important part of my life and your children. They're like my own children to me. She confessed with a glimmer of hope in her eyes. At that moment, they both realized that love had blossomed between them, a love born of friendship, mutual care, and the construction of a shared dream. They hugged and kissed, sealing a silent commitment to explore this new chapter together. The relationship between Mary and Luke deepened over time. They became not only business partners, but also life partners. James and Laura, now with a mother figure in their lives, flourished in an environment full of love and affection. The book nook was not just a success as a business, it was a symbol of the love and unity that had grown between Mary, Luke and James, and little Laura. They showed the community that, even in the face of the most difficult adversities, it was possible to find happiness and build a new family. The children grew up happy and secure, surrounded by the love of their parents. They loved the bookshop, helping with small tasks and delighting customers with their contagious smiles. The father, now completely recovered and fulfilled, found in his establishment and his new family the peace and happiness he was looking for. Mary, who once felt lost and alone, found renewed purpose in her relationship with Luke. She marveled every day at the joy and love in his life, something she had never imagined possible after the tragic loss of her husband. And so the story of that unlikely family continued, full of happy moments, challenges overcome and dreams fulfilled. Life, which had once brought them so much suffering, now presented them with days of contentment and moments full of affection. In the book nook, surrounded by books and smiles, the couple found in each other the life full of happiness and hope that they had always wanted. It was proof that, even in the darkest times, there is always an open door to a new beginning, full of possibilities and love. And if you like this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.